In this video, we're going to talk about the core, and I mean the core concept of autonomy, and what elements we need to build in order to get there. If you're a teacher, you're going to be interested on checking each one of these, and maybe how to implement spaces to have them in the classroom. And if you're a learner, you can self-assess, either considering what you're lacking or what you need to improve. However, this is not a how-to video. We're just going to talk about the concept. What's up, everyone? My name is Cesar, and I'm going to talk about autonomy. It's nothing new. Actually, the term dates back, well, I think the oldest resource I have is like from the 1970s. So it's been quite a while, a little bit more than 50 years, people talking about autonomy in education. I'm going to focus on language learning because it's the, the one area I really think I'm good at. And hopefully this information is going to help you create your own definition of autonomy too. Why your own definition? Because I'm just going to present the core concept. It's the core. You can build upon it, change it, add things, maybe remove other ones, but I'm just going to get here to a core concept. What we need here are the most common either words or phrases they have used to define autonomy to start building. So when we talk about autonomy, the first key word is capacity, thanks to Holick. A capacity to do what? Well, a capacity to take charge of your own learning. And that take charge means a lot, but it doesn't say much. However, this capacity is not natural. It needs to be developed. You don't inherit autonomy. Yeah, it's something that it develops as you grow up. And it's not a simple matter of independence. As you can see, I have ignored independence here as a key word. Another thing is that autonomy, it's in the learner, not in the situation, and which is something that people fail because they think autonomy is basically in the situation. And finally, there are maybe educational, psychological, political backgrounds that are going to modify complement or hinder certain parts of your definition of autonomy. So if I combine all of this, my concept, my core concept of autonomy is going to look more or less like this. Now, I know it looks really short. That's why I told you it's the core definition. For me, autonomy is an acquired capacity students develop to take charge of their own learning. However, I, as I told you before, take charge means more than just like, hey, now you're in charge, do whatever you want. It's not that simple. So what elements are behind this concept? Because this is a core for me. However, it has some implications. There are different things we need to develop in order to get there. Okay. So we are not just going to magically tell students, hey, you're autonomous now. Yeah, it's not going to work like that. We need to develop many things. As teachers, we always want to develop different things in our learners, not just knowledge about a particular subject. There are several things we want to develop in them, but this is just a sample. Oh, by the way, these are not the elements of autonomy. Um, maybe some of them point to autonomy, but not that, that close. The elements of autonomy that I have identified is not directly I. Well, first of all, the researchers who did it. Uh, especially in a class we had at university with Professor Ana Maria Samper and my peers, especially Hector and Michael, because they helped me remember most of these terms. But to be sincere, I forgot a couple of them. We were talking about the five selves, the five terms, the five things that build autonomy. I included another one. So this is a combination of my opinion, my informed opinion, and some research. These six elements can help us build autonomy in our classrooms. Long story short, these are the six selves. Self-awareness, self-direction, self-reliance, self-monitoring, self-regulation, and self-assessment. It's okay, maybe you're going to think, oh, there are two or three that are the same word. Well, not exactly. So I try to make a little notation to what makes them different from the others. But these are the six elements we have to develop in each learner to help them achieve a good level of autonomy. Self-awareness is going to help them know their strengths and weaknesses. They're not going to judge themselves, but they're going to recognize what they're good at, and they're going to recognize also the things that they need to improve. Self-direction is going to help them either to identify or create choices to follow. Self-reliance is basically about building independence. Also, it has some connections to information literacy because they're going to basically evaluate the kind of information that they need. Self-monitoring is going to help them to create the tools to measure or to identify changes in specific skills or moments. I know many people use self-regulation to describe a desirable behavior, but it's also about planning and following your plan. 
And finally, self-assessment, which basically assesses globally the success and quality of their learning as a whole. It's not a how-to-do things video. You don't need to have these six elements all the time to start creating autonomy in the classroom. Plan certain parts of your task and activities where they're going to need one of these to start to develop. That way, you're going to start little by little. It's not a situation of go big or go home. We have to start building autonomy little by little, especially if we haven't done it before. Autonomy is not going to look the same in all our learners, okay? Here I have two of my actual learners. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna give their names. When I say actual, it's because the data that I'm presenting here, well, graphically, it's from the profile I have for some of them. In my opinion, both have made an incredible progress in their autonomy. You may look that one of them is kind of artistic, kind of crazy, really active, especially because he can be really independent. And once his curiosity kicks in, so I have to say, this guy has a strong self-direction. On the other hand, this girl, she's also autonomous. She's incredibly aware of her capacity. Maybe that's why she's so demanding with herself. And coincidentally, uh, I haven't done a research project on this, but I, sh I should see if there is a correlation between self-awareness and self-assessment. Because she's really harsh on herself, but she's objective, and that helps her set good goals. And I mean, she's like even adopted that methodology of smart goals, but that's a topic for later. Long story short, each one of your learners are going to display different levels of autonomy in different ways. You need to know what is the best way to register to recognize and exploit this. Autonomy looks different in each learner, and autonomy looks way too different between countries or continents. So what you see as autonomous in South America, and you say like, oh, European or Asian students are way more autonomous, is because they have a different culture. The autonomy levels also vary depending on the culture. So that's one thing we have to bear in mind. So what's your concept of autonomy now? Did it change? Please tell me in the comments. Really, I want to see if you want to add, build upon this, remove ideas, add ideas, because knowledge is about building. What comes next? Uh, there are two pending videos I want to create. First, I want to talk about bad things, misconceptions that hinder autonomy. And another video talking about strategies, activities, and ideas on how to foster autonomy or the elements of autonomy I presented here. So I share the way I do it. Um, again, I have implemented this in the classroom and hopefully my ideas are gonna help you in your classroom too. So if you like the video, don't forget, uh, there's a like thing here, so click on that. Share and subscribe also helps a lot. So that's it for today. See you later and take care. Bye. Sar out.